Hello and welcome. Just a short little video to fill in while I'm waiting for parts for the uh, Chevrolet radio to come in. I uh, am waiting on the sheet metal to make the back panel uh, a new speaker although I think I may have resurrected the old speaker. We'll talk about that when the time comes. And what else? Oh, the vibrator's got to come in yet. So while we're waiting for that to happen, uh, I figured I'd try out some of these Cantherm NTCs. Now these are rated for 300 milliamp here. This radio draws about 250, 260 milliamp years uh, when it's running. 150 milliamp years of that is heater string and uh, the rest of it is uh, about 100 milliamp years of uh, draw for the B+. Plus. So in this case we have the NTC here in the entire radio string. If you're using a set that has a 250 milliamp year filament string or heater string you could always just insert it directly into the filament string and get your full 120 volts to your anode. So I'm about to find out how much voltage this thing actually drops on a cold start. Now if I turn on my differential scope probe here and my differential probe is connected directly across the NTC so I should be able to see how long or how much voltage it drops and for how long that should be ready. I hope everything fires off correctly here. I'm going to set my trigger level a little higher. Because if this doesn't work on this shot, i got to go away for 15 or 20 minutes and let everything cool down so the tubes are drying uh, their full current. Without a resistor in line, the cold start on these tubes it hits them with about an ampere of current. And remember, they're only rated for 150 milliampers. And that only happens for a few cycles, but uh, if the same tube is sucking up that surge every time, it's going to have a short life. If I've done my math right, this should be dropping about 45 volts RMS on startup. Uh, that would be, what, 60-something peak voltage, and the peak is the current, you know, that's what's going to generate the current that kills the tube. So my differential probe is here. The scope I think is ready to go. I'm on single sequence. It's ready to be triggered. The set is plugged in directly to the AC. Let's see what happens. And there we go. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that on the scope. I hope that stayed in focus. You can see the cold start here. Now this is a 50 milliseconds per division, so there's 50, 100, 200, uh, 150, so at least 150, approaching 200 milliseconds. It's limiting the inrush now. Let's see what the voltage is here. Cursors, cursor, that one. Okay, my delta is 3.52 volts peak. Or, yeah, peak. So that's times 20 because it's a 20 to 1, uh, <clears throat> 20 to 1 reduction in the differential probe. So uh, 3.52 times 20 equals that 70.4 volts it's dropping. That's even better than I thought on the peak. So it's dropping nearly 70 volts and that's happening over one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. That's plenty I would think. Oh, the 70 volts is in six cycles, but I mean it, it's a substantial drop for at least six cycles. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to give the uh, tube heaters 
plenty of time to start warming up. They don't have that large uh, a thermal mass or thermal inertia. And what I didn't look at, I'll have to go back and review the video, was how much bloom I had on the uh, pilot lamp. I doubt it was all that much. But that's pretty impressive. So let's turn it on again. Yeah, that lamp didn't go much past normal operating brilliance when it came on. So I'm going to let this thing warm up. And we'll see what kind of a voltage drop we have. across the uh, thermistor when it comes up, to t or the R NTC when it comes up to temperature here. And again, that was with no current limiting. That's directly off the line. Oh yeah, that's getting plenty toasty warm. We're drawing 260 milliamp years of current. Is that in, in the shot? Probably not. There it is. 260 milliamp years of current. So we're drawing a good uh, portion. We're only 40 milliamp years shy of uh, drawing the full rated current, which means we shouldn't have a very big voltage drop. And meter. Let's see. Measure volts AC. Okay, we're all set. Is that going to be visible. Oh, I'm still zoomed in. That's the problem. That's why the field of view was so small. You can tell I'm a hell of a videographer, can't you? So, we had a very good inrush limit. I'm happy with that. And let's see here. We're dropping just about 2 volts. And my voltage here runs anywhere from, oh, let's see what it is today, just out of curiosity. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There and here. So I'm running 125.4 volts today. And that varies between 118 and 125.4. So losing 2 volts is not a big deal. These sets typically ran on 115 or 120. So we're not really causing enough of a voltage drop to do any damage to our B+. The radio will operate just fine. And let's see if it's gone down any. Now, it looks like it's going to set about 2 volts of drop across that, but that's a whole lot better than having a 60 ohm resistor in series permanently. A lot of people put a resistor in there to limit the surge and it's in circuit constantly dropping a lot of voltage. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, hopefully that's a better view. Turn on the differential probe here. We got a spike. That's good. That means it's working. Set up for single sequence. Make sure I'm connected. Okay, we're across the... Uh, good. Here we go. And there we have it. We have a pretty good looking scope trace that time and it's the same results as before. A delta from zero of 3.52 peak. And you can see the decay over time, both as the filaments warm up, the voltage drop across the thermistor is going to go down, plus the thermistor is going down in resistance. So it's a combination of the two. But we still have a good long uh, ramp down, so the tubes are pretty well protected. Okay, we've given it another 15 or so minutes cool down and I want to see how badly the pilot light's getting beat up when it's turned on, how much of a bloom that's got. Uh, did, that, did that just trigger? I hope everything's set up here. Triggered, yes. Okay, so that's on. Single sequence is ready. And this is looking directly across the pilot lamp. Let's see what we get. 
Alrighty. And we'll move our cursor up. Uh, this one here, there's our peak from zero peak voltage. We have a delta of 340 millivolts times 20. So 340.34 times 20. 6.8 volts across the lamp, so that bloom we see in the beginning is actually just the lamp coming to its full normal brilliance and then tapering off. And if we saw this down here several minutes later as the tubes warmed up, this would come back up to 6 volts. So I'd say the uh, NTC is doing its job. I say it's doing it very well, actually a lot better than I thought it was going to. So. As far as I'm concerned, that's a solution. The 300 milliamp NTC dropping the, well in this case the entire radio, because this radio draws 200 and what, what did we say it was, 60, I forget now, my memory is excellent, it's just very short. Um, it's under 300 milliampers anyway, and if you had a 250 milliampere tube string, again you instead of, instead of dropping or putting the NTC in series with the entire set, you would just put it in series with the filament string portion and uh, that way it would come up to its full operating temperature and have its minimum voltage drop. And uh, before I sign off here, I don't know if you guys ever watch Buzz 1151. He just finished restoring a 1934 Filco Model 84. Now that's a transformer set. But like a lot of radios from that era, it was actually designed to run between 110 and 115 volts. Today's 125 uh, volt AC uh, voltage tends to run those transformers, the power transformers in those sets, pretty warm. So Buzz has added an AC capacitor, like a starting capacitor or a motor capacitor, I should say, motor run capacitor. And he goes through the, uh, he shows you how to figure out what capacitor you should have in there, how to calculate the uh, capacitive reactance. Now he also added an NTC, in fact, I think he added a CL90, which, uh, yeah, that's this one here. I think he added one of these CL90s, I think that was the part number he used, in series with the capacitor because he was a little bit concerned that on initial turn on the voltage peaked a little high. I don't think I'd be too worried about that. It's going to take the transformer, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour to start getting warm or starting to overheat. But the capacitor is certainly a good idea a good idea to bring the operating voltage down to about 110. The transformer will run nice and cool. I mean if you want to add the NTC in front of the transformer go for it. It certainly isn't going to hurt anything. But uh, I don't think I would bother with that because the transformer, like I say, it's not going to overheat in that first two or three seconds when you first turn the set on. It's only after it's been on for half an hour. And uh, I've had a lot of sets from that era that have power transformers in them. And years ago, those transformers get smoking hot running on 125 volts. So go over there to Buzz 1151 and check out his, his uh, 1934 Filco Model 84 Part 3. And I think you'll find that interesting. It's uh, definitely a good idea to do with those transformer sets. That's it for today. Short and sweet. Uh, Hello to everybody. Hope you have a great holiday. 2020, yeah, end of 2020, beginning 2021. And we had about four inches of snow out here last night. So that was the th first thing I did this morning is go out and run the snowblower for the first time this season. Take care. See you after the holidays. Bye-bye.